Section 5.5, Strategy for Transmodern Liberation Growth. A strategy, a strategy presupposes a project. We have defined the transmodern project as a liberation intention that synthesizes all that we have discussed. In the first place, it suggests the affirmation, the self-valorization of one's own negated or merely, merely devalued cultural moments, which are found in the exteriority of modernity, those still remaining outside of the destructive consideration of that ostensibly universal modern culture. Secondly, those traditional values ignored by modernity should be a point of departure for an internal critique from within the culture's own hermeneutical possibilities. Thirdly, uh, and, and hermeneutical, I, I don't think I said this earlier, I should have. Uh, hermeneutics is just interpretation. Um, so uh, when you interpret when you interpret your own culture, you're looking to the mythical and textual sources, and you're interpreting them in such a way as to to have relevance to the current moment of the culture. Okay. Um, thirdly, the critics, in order to be critics, should be those who, living in the biculturality of the borders, can create critical thought. Fourthly, this means a long period of resistance, of maturation, and of the accumulation of forces. It is a period of the creative and accelerated cultivation and development of one's own cultural tradition, which is now on the path to a transmodern utopia. This represents a strategy for the growth and creativity of a renovated culture, which is not merely decolonized, but is moreover entirely new. Okay, so he's summarizing what he's said so far. The dialogue then between the critical cultural innovators is neither modern nor postmodern, but rather in a strict sense transmodern, because as we have shown, the creative force does not come from the interior of modernity, but rather from its exteriority, or better yet, from its borderlands. This exteriority is not pure negativity, it is the positive rooted in a traditional a tradition distinct from the modern. It's coming, like in his diagram too, from the outside, but to, but but meeting uh, modernity uh, on the path that it is going. For example, for the indigenous cultures of Latin America, there exists an affirmation of na nature that is completely distinct and much more ecologically balanced. Okay, right? Um, this is something we really, in our critical moment of the ecological cataclysm, we have to look to indigenous communities uh, in those instances where they have alternate conceptions of nature. Because we, in modernity, in bourgeois liberalism, we have somehow gotten very confused about nature. We are fucking it up, and we don't know what we're doing. This is a conceptual misunderstanding. We don't know what nature is, and it is coming to haunt us. Um, indigenous cultures are a resource of looking at nature from a different perspective and maybe having a better understanding of what nature is because we obviously have made fundamental mistakes. Um, <clears throat> so for example, the indigenous cultures of Latin America, in, uh, for the indigenous cultures of Latin America, there exists an affirmation of nature that is completely distinct and much more ecologically balanced, which today is more necessary than ever. Given the capitalist modernity uh, confronts nature as something exploitable, marketable, and destructible, the death of nature is the collective suicide of humanity. And yet this globalizing modern culture learns nothing about nature from other cultures. 
which are apparently more primitive or backwards according to the developmentalist parameters. This ecological principle can also integrate the best of modernity, and it should not refuse all elements of modernity from the perspective of a pure substantialist cultural identity in order even to construct scientific and technological development that emerges from the very experience of modernity itself. Hopefully we can use the resources of modernity, all the technological progress, industrial um, resources that we have, but we need the cultural resources of those on the exteriority in order to get our head straight on what nature is. The affirmation and development of the cultural alterity of the post-colonial communities, peoples, which assumes within itself the best elements of modernity, should not develop a cultural style that tends towards an undifferentiated or empty globalized unity, but rather a transmodern plural European, Buddhist, Latin American etc. One which is multicultural and engaged in a critical, critical, other critical, but primarily self-critical intercultural dialogue. Um, okay, and that's where he ends. And notice we don't want some undifferentiated, empty, globalized unity, right? And, and this is, this is, you know, liberal bourgeois happy talk about about equality and multiculturalism but at the same time um, always pushing forward the the mega machine as Scheidler calls it you know um, these bourgeois liberals uh, from wall street who you know are major donors for example the the democratic party in the united states are the ones Oh, at the wheel of the mega machine and they have all this happy talk about about globalism and multiculturalism and nonetheless they're just driving the mega machine through cultures and annihilating other cultures and destroying the world and heading and, and driving us towards a a catastrophic moment uh, that is uh, is beyond comprehension uh, for for uh, most of us, um, we're just in a very dire situation, and um, in uh, this kind of criticism from the exteriority, from the periphery that Dussel is talking about, is essential. It's essential. We just, I, our survival is at stake, uh, and um, and and uh, you know the only alternative to a total global disaster is that just uh, you know the North American Empire just implodes upon itself, uh, but that's not good for us, you know. So um, so let's be thinking about this for our final essay. What can we draw from here that might uh, help with the ecological cataclysm or with other territory uh, movements? <clears throat>